Okay, and we are live. Que tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Another live stream, Tuesday evening, 7.35 p.m. Coming to you here from the outskirts of Madrid, the capital of Spain at this current moment. Yes, the capital of Spain. We're going to have a look at some of the news that has caught my attention today in the press here in Spain. We'll go into the comment section and check out what has been happening there on recent videos, some of the comments that have been left. In the second half of the video, I'll go into the chat section, check out what the activity is there, what's bubbling away in the chat section. And uh, as usual, I'll put the like icon on the screen here now so that if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so just below the video. It keeps me, mo me it keeps me motivated. I'll also say thanks to people that have supported the channel recently, whether it's uh, through the super thanks option, the super chat, buying me a coffee, or on Patreon. Many thanks for your support of this channel. It is, as I said, greatly appreciated. Now, the first piece of news today related to the weather. It seems that the drought has broken in some parts of the country and didn't the rain come down. As we can see here, rain hits Murcia and Valencia hard and forces classes to be suspended in more than 30 municipalities. A night of heavy rain in the Mediterranean and the new Dana has left heavy rainfall early this morning in the provinces of Murcia and Valencia and has forced the suspension of classes in more than 30 municipalities. This Tuesday, the eastern, southeastern and northeastern areas of the peninsula remain on yellow alert for rain. Faced with these phenomena, the Directorate General of Civil Protection and Emergencies recommends staying away from rivers, streams and low-lying areas. The Emergency Coordination Centre of the region of Murcia has attended a total of 117 incidents related to the heavy rains, mostly from Macerron and the region of the Campo de Cartagena, related to water drainage and rescue of trapped vehicles. And I think even some parts of Andalusia experienced heavy rain as well. I saw on the news earlier today, Almeria flooding there, some parts of Murcia as well, those river, uh, those uh, dry rivers or normally dry river, rivers that come down from the mountains behind Malaga, overflowing, cutting off roads, and a lot of people were uh, being caught in the wrong place at the wrong time when the rains hit. And uh, as the title of today's video suggests, it doesn't rain here in Spain, it pours. And uh, those Mediterranean areas again lashed with heavy rain. Uh, we can see here the advice, stay away from rivers, streams and low lying areas. Probably a, a good idea when it does rain in this country, especially in those parts. And if you are in Spain and you have experienced the heavy downpour, if you are in Murcia, if you are in Valencia, Andalusia, wherever you are, please let us know. Here, I got caught out today in a, in a, a, in a shower. It uh, poured down. My umbrella was useless as the rain was coming in from the side, so I got a little bit drenched. But uh, I survived and uh, it was a brief shower, but very, very heavy. So I can imagine what's going on down there in some of those Mediterranean towns and uh, villages and cities. The next piece of news related to the Melilla voting scandal. A member of the government down there has been arrested in the operation against the theft and purchase of postal votes. The National Police has launched an operation in Melilla against the alleged mass buying of votes in the autonomous city, which has so far included the arrest of nine people, three arrested on Monday and six on Tuesday, as confirmed by the government delegation. Among those arrested is Mohammed Ahmed Alal, Councillor for Districts, Youth and Citizen Participation of the Autonomous Government, and number three on the electoral list of Coalition for Melilla, the party of uh, Mustafa Albert Chan, a son-in-law of Albert Chan himself and his brother have also been arrested according to police sources. The nine people arrested have been released after making a statement to the police. Now this is a, a situation that's been going on for around a week. Uh, they discovered down there that um, uh, postal workers were being harassed when delivering uh, postal votes. And uh, we saw there that the, the alleged fraud of buying those votes, people apparently being offered up to 100 euros for their vote by this uh, political party, which allegedly 
has uh, contacts with Morocco, so maybe there's uh, an inference there that Morocco is trying to influence the electoral system here in Spain. I don't know. That's what some of the allegations are. But uh, some ugly scenes down there in Melilla culminating in the arrests of various people and the number three uh, politician on the list for that political party and uh, also a councillor down there in the autonomous city of Melilla. So some dodgy stuff going on when it comes to the elections here in Spain, which, as we know, take place in five days' time on the 28th of May. So we'll see how this story ends up. The uh, next uh, piece of news that caught my attention today, this one here about the Demographic challenge here in Spain. Every day Spain loses 140 natives and gains 1,661 foreigners. The population in Spain has increased by 136,916 people in the first quarter of 2023, but this gain is exclusively due to the fact that the number of foreigners grew by 149,530 people from the 31st of December to the 1st of April, while the Spanish population decreased by 12,614 people, according to the continuous population statistics published on Tuesday by the INE the Statistics Institute. This means that in these first three months of the year, Spain lost 140 native citizens and gained 1,661 foreigners every day, bringing the country's total population to 48.19 million inhabitants, of which 6.22 million are of foreign origin. In the last 12 months, the estimated population growth is 590,184 people, the highest since 2008. So 1,661 foreigners every day, uh, apparently here, coming into the country, increasing the population. And uh, I'll put my hand up as a person who's increasing this foreign population in the country. But lots of people coming in, obviously, and the local population, unfortunately, declining for various reasons, as we know, basically due to birth rate. And uh, the demographic challenge, of course, is to maintain the current population or indeed increase it through immigration, which seems to be the, the uh, policy there. And uh, the last piece of news related to the racism incident at the uh, Valencia football stadium last Sunday, the Mestalla football stadium, a game between Valencia football club and Real Madrid football club involving the Brazilian player Vinicius Jr. And El País is uh, stating here that racism in Spain does not end with football. The umpteenth a racist attack suffered this Sunday by Real Madrid striker Vinicius Jr. at Valencia's Mestalla Stadium has revived a recurring question. Is Spain a racist country? Does a man shouting the word monkey represent the feelings of part of a country? The player, who has accumulated 10 complaints for similar incidents, has made his opinion crystal clear on social media. I'm sorry for those Spaniards who do not agree, but today in Brazil, Spain is known as a country of racists. The repercussions of this episode, which have even reverberated in the 28th uh, of Ma uh, May election campaign and even in the G7, President Lula da Silva alluded to it in his appearance, invites us to raise the debate on racism in Spain beyond football. Discrimination, whether subtle or explicit, conscious or unconscious, is present on a daily basis in the streets, in the rental market, in police actions, in companies, in the government administration or on an, or on an individual and institutional level. So there we go, El País making it fairly clear what uh, it thinks uh, the racism situation is like here in Spain. And lots of comments left on yesterday's video about this topic. Some people saying that Spain is a little bit racist. Some people saying that Spain is not racist if you compare it to other countries around the world. But the uh, point of view is clear there from El País and some other press outlets that I have mentioned. So at least I would say at least the debate is on the table. And if uh, somebody like Vinicius has had to complain about this 10 times and nothing's been done, well, I think it's time that something should be done to stamp it out. But we'll see some of the comments uh, coming up now, what other people think of this issue. Now, the like icon back on the screen, if you haven't hit it yet, please do so. We're up to 56 uh, we'll see if we can get up to 75, maybe 100 likes today. We will see. Uh, as I 
go into the comments section now, some comments that have been left on videos recently. This one here from Mike, 300K for an app for government is peanuts. If the app works, then it, that is definitely worth the money. Consider that if the government commissioned this type of research with any of the major research companies, they would have to pay loads more money for it. With that said, I'm not sure of the quality of the data they will obtain with this app. It will most likely be very biased. This is related to something that I mentioned yesterday about the Equality Ministry here in Spain and a new law, uh, a new app that they are going to launch, I think uh, by the time summer rolls around, that is going to show how household chores are shared between the people that live in that household or cohabita cohabitation unit, as they are calling it here now. Uh, so there's going to be like a, a division of the chores and who does uh, which chore. And if somebody's doing more chores than another person, then it will be called out and registered on an app. My point yesterday was that uh, the government uh, experience that we've had with apps during COVID, especially when various apps were launched, but none seemed to work. I don't know whether this would be similar. And Mike's uh, 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 idea here that the uh, quality of the data uh, not sure about that, and it most likely will be very biased. And I don't know whether, my opinion, of course, governments need to delve in to the day-to-day -day of uh, people's homes and who's doing what and who's not doing what. I think uh, that should be something that uh, couples or families or people that live together need to work out amongst themselves. And I don't really think the government needs to get involved in that. Sure, you can educate people through uh, various schemes, but going uh, this far into it with an intrusive app, I don't know. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Another co another comment here from uh, Daryl, a.k.a. City Fan. La Vanguardia is a great newspaper, especially online. Credit to them for keeping a balance. La Vanguardia, La Vanguardia I should say, is the... Um, uh, Catalonian uh, newspaper of choice there for many, many people. Uh, also a national paper, but it doesn't get much uh, traction here in Madrid. Uh, a few people might buy it, but uh, it's a big newspaper, as I said, in Catalonia, La Vanguardia. And uh, Daryl, they're seeming to think that it is a great newspaper and uh, keeping a balance. So uh, thanks for that, Daryl. I have used uh, La Vanguardia in the past. I don't pay for La Vanguardia. I pay for three or four other newspapers, but I don't pay for that one specifically because uh, often the news doesn't pop up in my feed. But I'll check it out more and uh, see if it is worth a subscription going forward for some of their unbiased news. Let's check it out and see. Another one here from uh, Joseph. I don't think Spain is much more racist compared to any other EU country. For example, Italian football is known to have some far-right supporters who even give the Nazi hand salute at matches. Poland has many Nazi fans attending matches and they have pitched battles with rival fans. Many Eastern European countries in particular have terrible problems with racism towards black people. Yeah, so the issue is not really comparing it with other European countries because as we know, these problems are popping up in other countries, you know, frequently or, you know, every now and again. But the problem here in Spain, which seems to uh, happen time after time after time and they showed on the news last night, going back 25 years, how uh, players of uh, certain races have been victims of abuse from crowds, whether it's uh, you know having things thrown at them like bananas, which I mentioned yesterday, and that those images were clear for everyone to see again yesterday, or the most recent case, case which we saw the other day in Valencia. It just seems to happen, as I said, time after time after time, and nobody seems to say anything about it, especially the uh, football associations haven't done much up until now. Uh, the media is onto this one, but in the past have sort of let it go through to the keeper. And also the La Liga uh, body, uh, again, uh, you know, seem to uh, let the uh, problem um, uh, um uh, run its course and uh, never seem to take any action. And uh, as we saw, Vinicius has called this out 10 or 11 times before. So maybe we'll try to uh, stamp this out here, which is the philosophy of the uh, governing bodies of that sport. I mean, we always see during the World Cups the, the slogans everywhere, racism, no, fair play, all of these uh, slogans that they put up. 
but uh, some people seem to um, have trouble uh, letting that message sink in to their uh, craniums. Another one here from Marilyn. Can you discuss the poor internet megs we all pay, but it is strangled or throttled? We never get a stable 10 megas, which is the legal requirement. Now, I don't know where Marilyn is, but um, I know that internet connections can be a problem, especially in small towns, not so much in uh, cities or big towns, uh, for example, where I live here on the outskirts of Madrid. And I did a uh, speed check just before coming uh, or just before going live uh, this evening. And this is what I got, 887.18 download and 876.88 upload. So I'm happy with those speeds. But if Marilyn's saying there that she can't even get 10 megabytes, then obviously there's a problem. And maybe, as she points out there, her internet connection is being throttled, which uh, does happen when various people share the same. I think it's called node. I'm not sure, but I think they call it a, a node. When various people share, share the same node, there might be one for, I don't know how many houses. That's when your internet connections can slow down. So what I suggest, uh, Marilyn, is uh, looking into some other providers, maybe uh, looking into the company I use, Digi, whether they've got their own services where you are. But again, if I don't know where you are, Marilyn, I can't really help you out too much. But uh, if anybody else has similar similar problems to Marilyn's, uh, what are some solutions that we can put forward? Another comment here from uh, Marion. The government should not get into the family business. Domestic chores are not government business. Yeah, that was my sentiment as well there, um, Marion. I don't think government needs to get into uh, situations like this. We know that certain members of the current government like to, uh, well, they like to think that they can influence people's lives at every level, telling people where to shop, telling people who to see, telling people what to do, and telling people what to, uh, of how to share the housework, basically. Uh, but uh, again, I don't think, and uh, Marion agrees that it's, not necessarily something that the government should be interested in. And uh, I uh, second those words. Another one here from Gaz. Changing my driving license in Madrid is a pesadilla, nightmare. I asked a native police officer friend to call them. Their site doesn't work and you have to try and book with someone on the phone at 8am. Great. I saw somebody reply to this comment, Gaz, telling you to make various appointments at the Arturo Soria traffic uh, directorate which is uh, the main place to get these things done in Madrid my suggestion would be to go to a gestor or one of these administrative uh, helpers if you like who specializes in traffic if you need one I've uh, I have a friend who specializes in traffic don't know what he charges but uh, probably for um, a, a decent fee I would say he would sort that out for you get you an appointment uh, because all they do is go back and forth to that Arturo Soria traffic department, and they have enchufes, I believe, well, I say the word enchufe, meaning contacts on the inside, but because they're dealing with these people on a daily basis, they know exactly who to talk to and exactly what to do to get these uh, bureaucratic processes done, whereas... Um, us normal folk that don't normally uh, have dealings with the administration or the government here in Spain might not know exactly what to do. And it seems to be the case with getting that uh, driving license exchange there, Gaz, the British one, I suppose. Uh, and it should be a fairly straightforward process. Uh, so uh, look into that, getting a, uh, a gestor. And the final comment here from Andrew. Uh, we're all uh, the same race and just have different skin pigmentation. pigmentation. It's time we understood that. Yep. I'll uh, leave it at that. Fairly clear, uh, Andrew's opinion, and uh, I second that opinion as well. I don't know why racism still rears its ugly head, or somebody said, why does that word always go with racism ugly? Well, it's fairly clear. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Some uh, words there from Andrew to finish the uh, comments today. Now I'm going to go into the chat section. Before I do, it's time to change the backdrop. This one here was sent in by... Jennifer, who's down there in uh, Valencia. Jennifer also wrote me an email on the racism debate, which I will reply to. And this is of the uh, emblematic symbols down there in Valencia. I'm not sure what this building's called, can't remember, but a nighttime shot or a, uh, uh, a dusk shot there. So thanks, Jennifer, for sending that one through. And if you've, got a, um, if you've got a similar picture that you would like seen on the backdrop here, the address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. 
There we go. Spainspeaks at gmail.com. Send it through. If you've got any other uh, stuff that you would like me to look at or bring my attention to, like uh, many people have been doing recently, articles and other interesting facts about Spain, please send them through. So uh, thanks, Jennifer, for your pick here. Now, it's um, chat time. Let me go in here and see what's happening. Let me uh, see if I can scroll up to the beginning. Pauline, the first chat that I see here, coming in from a very wet Rojales, which is in the Valencian community. Yes, Pauline, that is uh, one of the areas that we saw affected by those uh, heavy rains, flash flooding. Barbara also coming in from the Playa Flamenca, which I think is down in that area too. Rainy there also. James and Kathy coming in from a sunny Augusta today, sipping a mellow Spanish Syrah Red and looking forward to returning to Cabo Roj soon for five weeks, returning via Jaén, Cadiz and Placencia. And James also sent me a, um, a picture earlier today, sipping, some, sipping on some gin and juice, uh, with a nice view, I think of the, uh, I think it was the Picos de Europa, and uh, James, thanks for your support also through the uh, super chat option option earlier today too. Thanks, James, for that. Appreciated. Uh, Kevin coming in too. Benny Dorm is flooded today. All streets underwater. Uh, yep, I think that's uh, fairly common in uh, uh, many of those Mediterranean towns. Uh, I was going to say something uh, negative about Benny Dom, but I'll uh, hold on to my comment. Um, Steve uh, coming in. Bit early for a change is uh, Steve. Good to see you in the chat, Steve. Nikki uh, in the chat section as well. Happy Tuesday. No rain, uh, then a year's worth in one go. Take care. Yeah, basically, Nikki, that uh, is what happens. The uh, gota fria, or the dana, as they call it nowadays, D-A-N-A, -A, these weather phenomenons. Alan coming in from uh, El Puerto, I scratched my nose, the Puerto de Santa Maria, back after a large yacht cruise on the med. Living the life, Alan, living the life in Puerto de Santa Maria and also on uh, cruises around the med. Good luck to you, Alan. Hope you enjoyed it. Professional layabouts in the in the uh, chat. Uh, Ola Stu, great channel. I think these computer-generated weather apps need new software on many occasion, occasions recently where you're going to have 100% rain, but 99% of the time it's wrong from a dry Tarathona, which is in Aragon, I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure of the uh, weather apps. Mine seems to get it right. I don't know why that is, whether it's um, better than the rest. I've got no idea. It's just the one that came standard on my phone. And it seems to be, uh, as I said, fairly accurate. Is it the most accurate thing in the world? No. But uh, remember that even the uh, nightly weather that we used to watch after the news was never 100% accurate, was it? I remember many a time growing up that we'd get a a dodgy forecast and you know, saying that it would rain and uh, sometimes it never did. So I think the one thing that we can learn is that the weather is unpredictable. Janet coming in from a sunny Oxford and that's the irony, isn't it, that the UK this week, splendid weather and down here uh, in Spain, wet weather. So the tables have turned. Um... Jose Antonio coming in from Ciudad Real, the uh, royal city down there, bang smack in the center of the country. Alan also adding so much for the drought. Seems to be that way, Alan. Another thing is whether all of the water that falls is uh, captured adequately. That's another question, isn't it? We don't want people complaining in a month's time that there's no water when all of this uh, rain has uh, fallen. Simon's uh, in the chat. Haven't seen Simon for a while, ever since he left Lanzarote. Back in Scotland with the suntan uh, fading fast, returning to Lanzarote in October for the winter. So uh, Simon, a winter uh, person down here in Spain and down there in the Canaries, getting away from that northern European winter, the Scottish winter, which uh, I imagine is uh, not the most pleasant place to be uh, in those winter months. I've only been to Scotland uh, three or four times and uh, I can't remember seeing the sun. I think I saw the sun once in the time that I was in Scotland. But then again, I wasn't there for a, 
any uh, great period of time. I think the longest I was there for about a week, I think. But uh, again, one of those places that you have to see it with rain, I think. Richard is in the chat as well, coming from North Yorkshire. Lovely weather forecast for the next 10 days there. There we go. Glorious, says Richard. Hope all is well. Heidi in the chat as well, coming in from uh, Madrid, chucking down at last. Thank goodness. Would have been even happier had it not been for the fact that uh, Heidi got her hair done this morning. So uh, the uh, humidity wreaking havoc with the hair, no doubt. Old guy doing stuff, a.k.a. Grant, coming in from a Drizzly Sierra up there in the north of Spain. Nothing unusual about that. Michael coming in from Torrox, 19 degrees Celsius. Cloudy, but drying there. So obviously that was a place that got hit by the rain today. Sharon coming in from a sunny London. That's, as I said before, the irony of the situation currently. Sunny UK, wet Spain. Remy with a Y coming in as well from a warm St. Feliu. Had a fantastic thunderstorm early this morning. Got some good rain. So it's been quite dry there recently, I think, also. St. Feliu in Catalonia. Gino in the chat as well. Coming in uh, from Canada, I believe. Hoping everyone is well. Sani's also here. Hello, Sani. What else we got going on here? Mel uh, from Cumbria, back in the UK after 11 days in Benidorm. Missed the uh, floods, uh, Mel. Lucky about, lucky about that. Only one day of rain. Working out where to next. There we go. Planning the trip back to Spain already is Mel. Daryl's in the chat. Thanks, Daryl, for uh, being here again. Another regular viewer. Gigi coming in from a sunny Northern California. Another regular viewer is Gigi. Uh, preparing for her Camino de Santiago walk, no doubt. Uh, Daryl also saying that there was some light rain in Barcelona, so not heavy rain, light rain there. Uh, doesn't the rain in Spain stay mostly on the plane? I think so, Alan. That was the um, My Fair, was it? Uh, where did that uh, come from? My Fair Lady, Pygmalion, was it? I'm not sure. Exploring with Jen. Yes, it rained this afternoon in Valencia. Uh, but only a couple of hours. Not enough, though. Hopefully it picks up again later and rains a bit more during the night. Thanks, Jen, for that. William, uh, just checking out uh, Benny Cam. It looks like the resort is closed due to too much rain. <laughs> again, I'll hold back on saying something negative about Benny Dorm. But uh, that is seems to be the case down there. Very, very wet. Easily flooded is Benny Dorm, I think. Uh, Dave, uh, our former U.S. correspondent back in Madrid and uh, arrived to rain, did uh, Dave? Hasn't rained for three months since he's been away. Got back today and uh, it rained. Took about an hour to clear passport control at Barajas this morning. There we go, Dave. Busy, uh, probably lots of queues there. People coming in to Madrid Barajas or uh, uh, Adolfo Suarez, I think it's called nowadays. Light rain in Mallorca, according to Rory, full of dirt also. Yeah, that's uh, another problem that we get. Nothing worse than just washing the car and you get one of those uh, uh, dusty rainstorms. Um, CL Man, the heavy rain puts the quality of the drainage system and the engineering skills of the... Uh, puts the... Well, yeah, uh, the skills of its designers. Usually they cut corners under the excuse that water volumes and levels will never reach the something. Yeah, thanks, uh, CEO Man, for that. A lot of people question the uh, drainage capacity in some of those uh, places there. Maybe the rain's just too heavy. I've got no idea. Uh, every time it rains heavily here, we uh, get flooding uh, down near the uh, motorway. And uh, so I don't know what the problem is there, but it could be an engineering issue, absolutely, and drainage system issue. Pamela, what a, thunder, what a thunderstorm and heavy rain for hours in San Juan on Monday. Uh, sunny at the moment. There we go. That's it. That's what we saw before. Dave agrees. No need for the app. More important issues to focus on. I think so. But uh, obviously that's a ministry that's got money to spend. And, you know, the uh, mandate is coming to an end this year. So they want to uh, leave their mark on society. Uh, what else? Let's have a look. Amanda's in the chat section as well. Uh, Rory's done a um, internet connection speed test, uh, saying that uh, my one here is very fast. So getting 65.8 in Mallorca and download 94.5. 
Yeah. Um, so a bit slower than the one that I've got, but uh, I recently changed. I Before I was on 600, 600, and I went up to uh, one giga, I think, one giga, and I've got the capacity for 10, but I have to buy a, a special um, adapter or something to, to, to get those uh, full 10 megas, and I don't think I need it at the moment, but because with what I do, I can upload a video in three uh, giga video minute maybe a little bit longer a little bit a little bit less depending so i'm happy with the speed that i've got uh michael saying that there's a art festival in nurka this uh, thursday through sunday come visit one of the costa del sol's most beautiful towns nurka yeah nurka and the mountain uh, town behind it frigiliana very nice uh, places down there in malaga uh, sort of uh, just before you hit the Granada province. Uh, what else we got going on here? Eric is in the chat coming in from uh, Terrassa. Lots of warnings of rain, but nothing. A bit late, wishing uh, uh, a bit late, but wishing all the best. Thanks, Erica, for that. We're up to the 31 minute mark, and uh, that means that I'm going to change the backdrop. Another picture sent in from Angela and John there in Menorca. We were speaking the other day about local town fairs and parties and all of these things, and Angela and John have sent through one of the local towns there in Menorca, a horse festival apparently, and we can see a, uh, a person there doing some tricks on a horse, uh, keeping the locals entertained, and uh, basically everybody in that picture there with their cameras out taking photos it's amazing how people uh, prefer to live their life through a camera nowadays rather than experiencing the moment, right? If they're taking videos, of course, if it's one photo, nothing wrong with that. But people seem to hold their cameras up at every event nowadays, just recording the event instead of watching it. What was that for? Let's watch it. Uh, let's have a look here. Let's have a look here quickly. Uh, Jen's adding uh, to what the photo was that uh, she sent through before. Puente Azud, the auto by architect Santiago Calatrava, a part of the City of Arts and Sciences. I thought it was that part of Valencia, Jen, the controversial ar architect, Mr. Calatrava. Calatrava. Yes, controversial he was, or he is still, I believe. Uh, Sucariva coming in, 22 degrees in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, let's have a look here quickly, if I can find something else. Ed uh, coming in from Barcelona. Pleasant enough Barcelona today, there today, according to Ed. Thanks, Ed, for that. Uh, just got lost uh, reading a book. Uh, ever got lost in reading a book, I imagine that is. I just did, but I got here. Thanks, Ed, for that. Yes, getting lost, reading a book. It's a great experience, isn't it? Something my son, unfortunately, uh, doesn't like experiencing. He doesn't like to read. So that's what we're working on at the moment. Yes. Zach, Zach uh, in the chat as well, coming in from, uh, I'm not sure where Zach, I think it's Canada, is it, Zach? Let us know. Hoping that we are all well. Thank you very much for that. Almost at the end of the chat section, so I'll be wrapping the uh, I'll be wrapping the live stream up shortly. Um, what else we got going on here? Uh, Amanda, spot on, Stu. People living through their cameras and therefore not in the moment. Very sad. But yeah, like I said, Amanda, nothing wrong if you take a photo, take take a still shot quickly with the photo, like the one that we've got here. But uh, you see at concerts all the time, people just stand up, uh, you know, watching a concert with their phone up like this. I mean, what's the point? You can't, well, you just would have the, the memory on your phone. Can't you have that memory in your mind? What we did before, technology like that. You can't post it anywhere because uh, you get done for copyright. So uh, it's strange, but anyway... Uh, Alex, Mallorca under the sun. The photo looks like it's from the San Juan. Festivities held on the 24th. Uh, I think it's the 20th, the 24th of June in Menorca where they have spectacular horse displays. There we go. Probably is, uh, Jen. Uh, uh, sorry, Alex. Probably is, uh, Alex. I'm not sure. I think it was in the description that Jen, um, 
who, who was sent this through? I think Angela and John sent through. I think it was in the description, but uh, my memory uh, is not that good. I can't remember. Uh, and Karee went to a show a couple of weeks ago and they locked your phone away in a special pouch and then unlocked it for you when the show was over. I think that's what you need to do, basically. I think that's what we need to do. As I said, concerts are terrible. People just standing there with their phones. Unbelievable. But anyway, all right, so I'm at the uh, end of the chat section, meaning that I am going to wrap the video up. It's been a pleasure, as always, doing the live stream today. I, I'll try to get some content out tomorrow. I can't guarantee it. Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, but again, I'll be back on Thursday with another live stream. Hopefully, I'll see you all there. Uh, and uh, again, thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for uh, participating in the chat. As always, a pleasure. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Oh, we've got one more just come through. Remy, good night, Stu. Good work. Thank you very much for that, Remy. Uh, as I said, I'll uh, see everybody again on Thursday. Hasta luego. Adios. Bye-bye.